Our next movie is named Empire of the Sun, and this is the first movie Steven Spielberg has directed personally since The Color Purple, although he's been involved in a lot of productions in the meantime. It tells the story of a young British boy named Jim who lives with his parents in Singapore in the last days before World War II. Jim is obsessed by airplanes, and when war comes and rioting breaks out on the streets, he's separated from his parents because he pauses to pick up a favorite toy plane. The boy is placed in a Japanese prison camp where he's befriended by an American merchant seaman played by John Malkovich. I want you to get Mrs. Partridge's potato while you're up there. I think she died, Basie. She died, Jim, but she didn't hand in her dinner pail. There is a dreamlike quality to some of the scenes, like this one, where he sees a kamikaze ritual at an airfield near the prison camp. Although Empire of the Sun is based on an autobiographical novel by an Englishman named J.G. Ballard, who actually went through some of the same experiences, the material here has a lot in common with Spielberg's other films, especially that theme of the child separated from its parents and the possibility there's magic to be found in reaching out to touch things in the sky. E.T. And, and over and over in his films, people are touching out to some source of light, energy, and magic. Well, uh, here it seems just a little bit forced. I don't think prison camps forced. are that terrific. This is basically a good idea for a film that never gets off the ground. The center section sags. It seems to lack any clear purpose or energy. And then there are about six big significant scenes that all feel like the end of the film. Right. And that's from a director whose films usually seem to hate to quit. I don't know. I, I just felt kind of wonderful, wonderful, wonderful energy went into the film and nothing came no. out of it again. You know what? The people probably can't tell what the movie is about, both from the clips that we just saw and, with all respect to you, and why should I have so much anyway, uh, they probably don't know what it's about just on what you reviewed it. And you know what? I don't know what the film is about, really. It is so confused and I, so well, totally... No, 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 no let, me, let me go for a little bit. It is so totally confused and taking things from different parts. Mm. I mean, the film has... Uh, on one hand, if it wants to say something about a, a child's eye view of war, you got a movie made by John Borman called Hope and Glory that was just released that is much better and much more uh, daring in, in showing the whimsy that children's view of war is. On the other hand, this film wants to hedge its bet and make it uh, like an adventure film, so you've got like Indiana Jones with the John Malkovich character helping the little kid through all the fun in war. I mean, I don't know what Spielberg wanted well, to do. I think that actually this f film falls within the general category of coming of age. A young boy uh, is taken away from his parents and he has these experiences over a period of three or four years that allow him to grow up a little bit. But at the same time, they just, for a story like this, you need a magnet to get from the beginning to the end. You have to have something very clear and it's extremely episodic and unfocused and, That's right. and uh, That's something I'm here and something there and something you here. Got it. And it doesn't help that the Malkovich character is himself kind of dreamy. I mean, he's basically William Holden oh. from Stalag 17, except that he seems... Spaced uh, kind of out. Spaced out of it all. Yeah, yeah, strange, strange. Both disappointed, though, in Empire of the Sun, Steven Spielberg's new film. Lots of beauty and spectacle, but not enough story energy. Two thumbs up.